All right, um, I was looking at the Tiny SA and was commenting on some harmonics that were being generated. And those are something that all spectrum analyzers do if they're overdriven, if the mixer is overdriven. So uh, to be fair for the uh, Tiny SA, I'll show you how even an expensive spectrum analyzer uh, can show those things. So we're going to drive it at a pretty high level. It's still within the range of the Tiny SA, uh, but I'm going to drive it up to 0 dBm, and then we'll drive it down. Now, I heard from uh, one of the um, people who worked on the Tiny SA, and he said that the um, harmonic should disappear at minus 30 dBm. Okay, so if you try to put in a signal larger than minus 30 dBm, then you'll start to see harmonics, but below minus 30 dBm, everything should look clean. So, so let's test that out. Um, I'm going to take it up to right now, we're looking at about a minus 37 uh, dB level. Uh, we're measuring minus 37 here, we're measuring minus 39 here. And, and on both displays, you see that there's, uh, that there's no spurs or uh, no harmonics being shown. So let me go up to the highest setting. So this is uh, 0 dBm on both. So we're measuring 2.4 dBm here. Let me lower it down a bit. I don't like that. All right, we're going to start here. We're going to start at 0 dBm. So we have uh, 0 dBm showing, 0.4 dBm showing on the uh, Tiny and uh, minus 3 dBm uh, showing on the HP. And you can see the HP is showing harmonics, so those are mixer products uh, as the input is being driven uh, harder than, uh, than the mixer can, can handle. So you can see that even in expensive uh, spectrum analyzers, we're, we're, getting, we're getting a harmonic series here at, at a high level. So let's drop it down 10 dB. And we can see the harmonics have dropped down. Uh, we still have a harmonic on the uh, Tiny SA. So that's at uh, minus, uh, minus 10 level. Here's at the minus 20 dBm level. We can just see a hint of it here, and it's still up, uh, here about the same amplitude as it was before. We went down to the minus 30 level. At the minus 29.1 level, we're still seeing a little bit of it here. It's completely gone over here. And if we go below minus 30, so here we're at uh, minus 40 dBm, and we're seeing no harmonics at all. So uh, we're getting a clean, a clean sweep here, and of course we're getting a clean sweep over here. So let's go back up again until we start to see something. So, so I may have been a little harsh on the Tiny SA for harmonics. Uh, it does do it does do, do do well below minus 30 dBm, uh, but. Anything above minus 30 dBm, you're starting to see. Uh, you're starting to see harmonics. That's minus 20. Here's minus 10, and here's zero. I should have mentioned that we're spanning between uh, zero and 100 megahertz. Zero and 100 megahertz, and we're inputting a 14 megahertz signal. So it's wide enough to see the the harmonic structure. But let's zoom in a little bit. All right, now we're spanning between uh, zero and 50 megahertz. And you can see they're both showing a little bit of uh, the spur here. And uh, we're at uh, minus, minus 10, minus 20. It's gone here. It's still a little bit here. Minus 30, and it's gone. So right at about minus 30, this, uh, this one cleans up. And this one cleans up at about, uh, let's see where the marker is. I'm measuring here minus 20. So at minus 22, we're just starting to see a little bit of it. So yeah, it's not it's not so bad. All right. So uh, yesterday I showed that uh, when you went to look at carriers, it wasn't doing a very good job. And now I know that's because we were overmodulating the uh, the mixer. So. Here I have a uh, signal coming in at minus 40 dBm, so we're well below that minus 30 level. And um, I have a 14 megahertz center, a 100 kilohertz span. 
I've set the resolution bandwidth manually to its lowest setting, which is three kilohertz. And uh, so now with a 14 megahertz carrier, AM modulated, 10 kilohertz modulation frequency, 50% modulation, it's measuring exactly right. So it's doing a great job now. So now we're able to see the carrier. Um, it's operating just like a normal spectrum analyzer. So I'm very impressed now. I really like the tiny SA now. Um, the limitation is though, you need to send it very small signals. It can't handle large signals. And so as long as you get the attenuation correct, uh, it's gonna do a good job. Now you can change the attenuation internally. I haven't played with that yet. I'm changing it externally to make sure that I'm within the bounds of the SA. So I think the uh, software team of the Tiny SA can do a better job of choosing uh, which attenuation settings, which resolution bandwidth settings, and stuff like that. I should have gotten a picture like this yesterday um, if it was uh, uh, in auto mode, right? Auto mode should be able to choose the right things for, to do the job that you're asking it to do. And uh, it looks like it's doing a great job. So this is a uh, uh, 10 kilohertz, nine, Let's go to five. So this is five kilohertz. We can still resolve it pretty good. And uh, why doesn't this lock over here frequency? Here's three kilohertz. Let's see if we can see three kilohertz. That, yeah, there we go. That's exactly what we should see. We're right at the resolution bandwidth of the IF filter. And now we're seeing a funny little shaped thing. So we can't resolve the carriers, but we know that there's something going on there. Um, our resolution bandwidth's a little bit better on the HP. We have one kilohertz resolution bandwidth over here, and we only have three over here. So let's go back to 10 kilohertz. So yeah, I'm really impressed. It's, uh, it's doing a great job. So. Um, in order to get the right picture, you've got to be able to set the right settings. So I think there's a, a big learning curve of making sure that you have low signal levels and that the resolution bandwidths are set correctly and stuff. Um, I think if you just try to do automatic mode, you won't, you won't get as good results.